Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today for our midweek series as we conclude our series on sacred pilgrimages. 
My name is Reverend Claire Summerhill. I'm a minister here at Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. And we believe in living with joy. We're seekers and searchers. We are focused on creating a world that works for everyone and knowing our part and knowing what we can do to make a difference. That's what we teach. That's what we practice. That's what we support each other in. I like to begin our services with an invocation. Invoke means to call upon. And for me, our invocation, of course, is an announcement to the universe, to the all that is, that we're paying attention. We're not trying to get anyone's attention that's outside of us because we're all part of the same whole. The invocation is our chance to let go of the busyness of the day, our thoughts, our concerns, our worries, and focus for these few minutes on what's important, on what we want to do to shift our experience of life. So come with me into that experience of prayer. So this is what I know. I know that love is all there is. I know I live in love. I know I am surrounded by a powerful, creative, loving energy, a life force that flows in and through all that is. I know, as this is true for me, it's true for everyone listening, now or in the future, because there's no separation. We are all one. And from this place of knowing the truth of who we are, we declare our intention for this time together tonight, that it will be a time of blessing, a time of joy, a time of opening, a time of awakening. I let that be, knowing all is well. And we say together, and so it is. I want to thank our practitioners for holding high watch tonight. Our practitioners are trained to know the truth for us, the truth that there's no separation, the truth that we live in love, the truth that joy and freedom and clarity are possible for us. So I thank them for sitting in meditation and holding this space in their love. So. During this month of September, we've been exploring this idea of pilgrimage. And I want to take a few minutes to recap what we've talked about. And if you missed some of these services, they are available, of course, on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and search for CSL GLV, you'll get our channel. And if you subscribe, then it makes it easier to find it the next time. So if you'd like to go back and watch any that you missed, they're available there for you. So we started the month by looking at some of the most famous pilgrimage sites around the world. You know, Muslims have, have Mecca, Christians have Lourdes and the Church of the Nativity, the Holy Land. Buddhists have the birthplace of Buddha. Hindus have the Kumbh Mela, the biggest gathering of people for religious purposes anywhere on earth, celebration that happens only every 12 years. Places honored because saints were there or holy people were there. And we talked about why people go on pilgrimages. And we found that most people who go on a pilgrim go on pilgrimages, experience similar things. They describe a feeling of peace, a feeling of of clarity, a feeling of connection as they're there with others who have made the same pilgrimage or making the pilgrimage with them. They have a sense of their oneness with nature, with the infinite, Some people talked about going on a pilgrimage and seeing reality in a new way, 
kind of like, you know, we walk through life with dark glasses on or very dark glasses on or looking through water. And we think that what we see is reality. And then the glasses come off and we come up out of the water and we see reality as it really is. That's what some of these people who have gone on pilgrimage reported a sense of seeing things more clearly, seeing things as they really are. And of course, from there, we move to this idea of our personal inner pilgrimage and how the two are the same and how by going within on our own pilgrimage, we can experience those same things, that sense of, of peace, that sense of clarity, that sense of connection. You know, we're all wanderers in a way. We've, we've forgotten who we are, where we come from, and we're seeking our way home. We're pilgrims. And just like a pilgrim on a physical path, we lose our way. We wander off the path. We get lost. We have to find our way back. So we talked about how they're the same and how the experience is the same. The next week, we looked at what Ernest Holmes said about journeys. Ernest Holmes is the founder of the philosophy we follow. He was a scholar and a seeker, a mystic, who studied all the religions. And he loved this metaphor of life as a journey. Life as an ongoing journey, and not just a journey, but as an adventure. Life isn't something to be endured or suffered or struggled through to make it. He saw life as an ongoing adventure. And he saw our experience in learning how to use our power, our creative gifts, as part of that adventure. He taught that we can use our thoughts to create and that that's part of this adventure of being human. Here's something he said that I really love. If daily we are realizing more of truth and applying it in our actions, that's our goal, to realize more of truth and apply that in our actions, then we are on the right path, and eventually we shall be made free. It is a wonderful experiment and a great adventure to make conscious use of the law, to feel that we can plant an idea in mind and it gradually takes form. Yes, a great adventure. Then the next week, Theo Burns, one of our members here at Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas, shared with us a pilgrimage she took to the Camino de Santiago in Spain. And this is a, an ancient and famous Pilgrim Path, 300,000 people walk this pilgrimage every year. It takes, uh, she talked about walking 12 miles a day, it can take uh, several weeks to finish the distance from the beginning to the cathedral of St. James at the end, where it is said that James, the disciple of Jesus, is buried. She told us about attending the Mass of the Pilgrims where she and her companions were recognized. But she also talked about what changed within her as she was on this pilgrimage. She described it as her head clearing. See, isn't that the truth? We walk around and our heads are just so clogged up with fears and upsets and memories of this and old grudges and things we should have done and didn't do and who to blame that we can't hardly even think. And she described that on this pilgrimage, she felt her head clearing and she could see clearly. And as so many pilgrims described, she experienced this feeling of peace, of joy, of clarity, of ease. And then she told us that our life pilgrimage is the same, and those things are possible. We don't have to go halfway around the world and hike 12 miles a day to have these things. They're available if we go within on our own inner pilgrimage. 
And so then we talked about creating our own holy place, finding our holy place within us that we can go to as we follow along on our inner pilgrimages. And then last week, we met Peace Pilgrim, uh, an amazing woman who made a commitment to walk for peace and said that she was going to walk until mankind learned to live in peace. She carried no money. She only carried what she could have in her pockets and accepted shelter when it was offered, accepted food when it was offered. And she gave us a wonderful example of how our inner journey and our outer journey can come together. Hers was one. So today we're coming to the end of this series. What have we learned? What have we learned? What can we take from this discussion of pilgrimages, sacred journeys, our inner journey, the adventure of life? Here are a couple of things I want you to take with you from all that we've talked about this month. Now, the first one has to do with a confusion between the journey and the goal. Now, the thing to remember is that neither one of these is more important than the other. So sometimes we get focused on, well, it's just the journey that matters, and we lose sight that there is a goal. Our goal is, is peace, freedom of discord, our experience of being one with all that is, our opening to the amazing gifts and abundance that surround us. That's our goal. That's what we're seeking through our life pilgrimage. And yet, we can't focus too much on that or we lose sight of the joy of the journey. And it goes on and on and on. You know, Christians sometimes get so focused on getting to heaven that they forget about the joy and adventure of the journey. Some other people, we get so interested in go with what's going on that we forget what our inner search is for, what we're actually seeking. Now, I'm going to give you an example that might help you understand this, the way to hold these two in balance, the journey and the destination. And that's, you might think this is a little silly, but just bear with me. This is the example of the Rubik's Cube. Now, you remember Rubik's Cube. It's a, a puzzle from the 70s, and you know what it is. It was a cube. Each side was a different color, and you could mix it all up, and it had thousands of ways it could be mixed up. And then the challenge was to fix it so that each side was one color again. Now, if we think of, of Rubik's Cube as sort of a metaphor for our journeys, the journey is fixing it. The goal is having the solved cube. However, here's an interesting thing. Now, I don't know if any of you like did the work to learn how to solve it. I actually did one time many years ago. I couldn't anymore. But as soon as you got it solved, what did you do? Well, you mix it up again. Now, why is that? If the goal is to have a solved cube, once you got it solved, in fact, if the goal is to have a solved cube, why did you mess it up at all? You should have just taken it out of the package and set it up on your mantle. Because the goal isn't a solved cube. Just as on a pilgrimage, the goal is not actually to get to any place. The goal with the Rubik's Cube is to know that you can fix it like no matter how messed up it is. And that's why as soon as you solve it, you mess it, mix it up again to make sure you really do know how to solve it. Now in life, see, we have many challenges. And in our lives, sometimes it's like a soft Rubik's Cube. You know, everything's just going smooth. Everything's perfect. You know, you're happy. Things are moving along. And there's your soft Rubik's Cube. And that's great but it doesn't last. Rubik's Cube gets mixed up and you're back 
to the puzzle, the challenge of solving it. Now, as you think about that, I, I always want to remind us, it kind of makes it sound like we choose our challenges, and, and I don't know exactly how that works, but this only works when we're looking at ourselves. So we never ever look at another person who's facing a bunch of challenges and think, whoa, you know, you really chose to mess your cube up good that time. You had things going really good for you, and now look what you did. And we never say that because it's not about the other people. We don't know their path. But we can look at ourselves and look at whatever's in front of us. Oh, here's a chance to practice again. And instead of thinking of wanting to get to a place like heaven, we think of what I want is wherever I find myself, I can transform that place into heaven. I can take whatever the mess is and I can transform that into heaven. And it may be that we do that over and over again because that's the challenge, that's the adventure. Each time the challenge is maybe getting more exciting, taking us further, deepening us. So along with that, there's an idea from the Buddhist tradition that I really like. And this is the idea of the bodhisattva. Now the, in Buddhism, the goal, the end result, the thing Buddhists are seeking is to, they might call it becoming a Buddha, they might call it um, experiencing Buddhahood, um, they might call it enlightenment, and that's the goal. That's similar to what we mean when we talk about experiencing our oneness with all that is, knowing there's no separation, and experiencing the freedom and the joy and the power when we realize that. We can't be harmed. That we're here, we live in perfection. They call that enlightenment, and other traditions have, have similar words for that. So that's the goal for Buddhists. Now the bodhisattva is a person who has reached that goal, has experienced enlightenment, has entered into Buddhahood, who has experiencing fully the Buddha nature, and yet decides not to just rest there, not to just stay there, which they could, no more suffering, no more struggle, but to go back into human existence where people are still suffering with a commitment to stay until there is no more suffering, to support the people along the way. So I sometimes think Jesus might have been a kind of bodhisattva. Uh, Christians teach that, that he was a perfect being, and yet he chose to come to teach, to show the way, to show the example, to teach love, to teach people that there was another way of living life, another way of experiencing life, that they didn't have to stay in that place of suffering. So when you're thinking about your pilgrimage. This is an example of how the goal and the journey just come together in one. Sometimes I like to think of it as kind of a circle rather than just a line starting at a goal and going to a destination, starting at a beginning and going to a destination. Instead, it's more like a circle. You know, we start, we move toward our goal, we reach it, we enjoy it, then we face new challenges, we reach it, we go again, we just make it a cycle rather than a line. And, and when you think about Theo and her pilgrimage in Spain, you see, her goal was not to be at the cathedral. If that had been her goal, she just could have taken a plane and landed and gone to the cathedral. Her goal was to walk to the cathedral from the starting point and to have that experience of moving along the path. So when you get kind of stuck in that sometimes, which we do, which we think, if I could just reach the goal, then everything's going to be okay. That's not the way it works. Then we're going to have new challenges. 
you have a new cube to solve, a new configuration of circumstances and everything that's going to come, and we're going to be able to start all over again in solving that and experiencing the oneness, then the challenge again. You know, we've talked about taking a step, and of course, every one of our practices that we teach are those steps along the journey, meditation, contemplation, prayer, service, sharing, all of those are how we take those steps along the path. And there's no way to get there. There's no way to get to that place we seek, that place of knowing our oneness with all that is, that place where all separation fades away and we know reality as it really is, except by taking those steps, step by step. And there's a joy in that journey. I want to end with a little poem that I wrote called Consider the Lilies, the One Song. As you listen to this, think about the journey, the destination, our goal, our ultimate goal, to experience the joy that comes with knowing there's only one. I consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, awakening to life, they reach for light. Without want or hesitation or thought of lack, they stretch toward life with everything they have. Their very cells know only this, to turn to light. I breathe this life-transforming breath as well. Breathe it deep, this energy of growth, expansion, light. I breathe it in, make it part of me. I breathe in God. I breathe in life. I breathe in all there is. Blossoming to fullness, the lilies echo lily song, God's song, and mine. I consider the birds of the air, how they lift and with a shriek soar, sailing wild and far, wings spread wide from small safe nests, they launch into a life of freedom, song on the wind. Nothing disturbs them, all they need is there, air and light, wide open space, a song to sing. I breathe this energy as well, Breathe it deep, this energy of freedom, flight, expansion. Limitless vistas open to my view. I breathe in God, I breathe in peace, I soar, I climb, and breathe in eagle song. As the lilies of the field, the birds aloft, I consider myself an instrument in the great symphony, the one song of the universe. I too am here to play my song, to sing my joy, to know and welcome every gift this bursting, generous, spreading universe holds out. As lilies grow from eager shoots and eagles, hesitant and awed, first spread still downy wings, I transform into myself, awake to life, to power, to love. I breathe the lily's breath and soar, free, unrestrained, one with the wind. I hear God's symphony. Joining my voice with all that is, I know myself, part of the one song. You're part of the one song, too. You breathe in that energy, that joy, that light. Know this and remember this. Let's go briefly together into prayer. I know that there is only one. It is in all and through all. And I am an expression, a song of this one. Out on the wind, soaring, floating, and as I know this is true for me, I know this is true for each person listening now or in the future. We are one. 
We are on one journey together. We support each other. We love each other. We know the truth for each other. Knowing this, I live in gratitude. I live in joy. My head is clear. My mind is open. I am free. I know my power. I let this go, knowing it is so, knowing the truth that is all there is. And we say together, and so it is. Now's our time to share our good. We welcome and value your contributions. They make it possible for us to do what we do. And as we give, we receive. It's a flow. So you open the faucet, turn on the faucet to let the water out. More comes. And no more can come unless you open it and let it out. We're going to take a moment to receive your gifts and pause, reflect on gratitude, you can use our text to give number, mail a check to our address, go to our website. Your gifts are so appreciated. And, and we appreciate the way that you are growing in your consciousness of abundance, your ability to give and receive. So that's it, our series on our sacred pilgrimages. I thank you for being on this pilgrimage with me, this journey of life, this adventure of life. Let's all go forward in excitement, in wonder, ready, willing, ready to see what's around the next bend, what's possible, what's available. Loving the journey, loving the idea of reaching that goal that we've set for ourselves, knowing that when we get there, a new goal shows up, life expands and expands and expands, and we know that all is well. 
Go in peace, know you are loved, know you are respected and held, that we know all is well, that your life blossoms into perfection and joy. And so it is. Namaste. CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community, connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide, in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of creation. The monthly publication, Science of Mind magazine, is a treasure to be read and contemplated. Along with in-depth articles, there's day-to-day spiritual support to be gleaned from its daily guides. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This is a weekly group discussion that focuses on those daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. CSL Greater Las Vegas brings you much of your favorite spiritual music every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time with Spiritual Soundscapes. Enjoy performances from CSL GOV vocalists along with special guest singers. This Friday, Melissa K. Allen performs What the World Needs Now. It's music for your soul. Subscribe to the CSL GOV YouTube channel to get a convenient link sent to you for each musical performance. Our goal is to create a beloved community, and this will require a qualitative change in our souls as well as a quantitative change in our lives. On Sunday, October 3rd, Rev. Scott Olson invites us to investigate the beloved community. Since the video of the murder of George Floyd shocked the world, there has been a mixture of high energies revealed. Some of these energies have been positive, like love and compassion, while others have felt more negative, like resentment, anger, and judgment. Join Rev. Scott as we discuss creating safe space all around us so that the beloved community can become a reality. Prepare to receive this thought-provoking message by first participating in 15 minutes of meditation with licensed practitioner Karen Dumphy at 9.45 a.m. Pacific Time. The Sunday celebration will begin at 10. Thank you.